<laughs> it must have been, though, Carol, if you, if you don't mind me bringing this up, it must have been a strange moment when you first did it with, without Richard. Uh, without Richard, yes. Um, it was a, um, quite a horrible moment, really, to be honest, to go into the studio. And uh, it was upsetting for all of us, because all the camera crew have worked on it for 20 years or so, and, and we have a very small production team, and they've all worked on it for years. And it, I mean, it, it was just horrible to be there without him. Because um, it's very much, and you, you watch Count. Anyone who's watched Countdown in the past, you just knew whatever we said to each other. There was a lot of love going on in that studio. And mm. We're very, um, very close, and um, that was just really hard to do it without. But there's something great about the fact the show continued, really. It is like... because it's part of his legacy. You see, now, this is a bit more serious. I read this, and I, be honest, this pissed me off, Carol. Why? Well, go on. It'll piss you, I'm sure it pisses you off as well. I just think this is... Anyway, I'm going to read it out. And this was from Ulrika Johnson's column. Yeah. And this was after, very shortly after Richard Whiteley died. Oh, I know that, yeah, I know. You don't mind me reading this. I just read think... It. She said, I can't be the only one sick of the sight of Carol Vorderman moping tearfully about in a slinky black dress, crucifix and glam makeup. I realise her grief must run deep, but you could be forgiven for thinking she was bereaved, not Richard's private and dignified partner, Katharina Panovich. Not a nice thing to write. Oh, yeah, God, what did you think when you read well, that? Well, I didn't know that it had been written until I went to Richard's funeral, which was um, obviously a very emotional day for everybody. And uh, Cathy and I are very close, very close, and... Uh, a few people came up to me at the funeral and said, you know, about it, and I hadn't read it. And so then I did read it, and I, I just thought it was the lowest of the low. Actually, to mock someone's grief was just dreadful. Because we were, you know, we were together for a long, long time, and he meant the world uh, to me. And Cathy, Cathy was his soulmate. I, you know, everybody knew that. That wasn't anything like that between Richard and I. But we'd been... Um, you know, very, very, very close friends for a very long time and shared a lot of things together. And uh, I just think to mock grief is not a, not a nice thing to do. Have, have you spoken to her since or tried no. to contact her about no. it? No, no. I don't think there's any point. Maybe. But eventually, celebrity being what it is, you're going to be somewhere in the same room? Well, I don't think there's any point, you know, bringing it up really to her because she will write what she writes. And I mean, she lived the life that she lives, frankly. And we had Richard's memorial this week, and uh, it was obviously a very sad day, but it was also a very happy day because we were celebrating. Yeah, him. totally. And he was—he was just so daft and so wonderful. You know, there were so many different things that Richard did. If if he could get himself into a pickle, he would. You know, it was one of those people, verbally or physically or whatever. There was one night he was great at lunch. He was the best lunch person in the world of all time. So you would start lunch at half past twelve, let's say. He'd say, come on, darling, come on, little one. He used to call me little one. Come on, come for lunch with your Uncle Dick, you see. So we'd go off for lunch somewhere. <laughs> 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 Slightly uh, scary, but carry no, on. No, no, no. That's what he always said. And he used to take that by the hand. We used to walk along. Let's say we was in London. And, we, and there was this one particular day. We started at half past 12. And people cut, and there were about six of us at lunch. And then they all disappeared at half past three. And we thought, it's a bit early, isn't it? So we then went on. We stayed in this restaurant till about half past six. By the time... They wanted our table. They kicked us out. So we went off. To, he, knew, he knows every party in London that's going on. So we went to one party, and then we were chatting around there for two hours, and then we went to another one. And then, in the end, a girlfriend of mine had phoned me up. She said, I'm going to eat at this restaurant, this late-night restaurant in London. Will you come? I said, I'm with Richard. Bring Richard <laughs> along. So I ended up in this restaurant at 2 o'clock in the morning with Richard, me. This is from lunchtime. Richard, me, my friend, and her friend who was Bianca Jagger. And Richard said, give us a lift home. So my last memory at three o'clock in the morning was of Richard Whiteley in the back of a Honda Civic, snuggled up to Bianca Jagger and waving at me out the Honda Civic. God, I wonder how that night concluded. 